River cruises along the River Thames are popular and expensive. Taking a regular blue and white river bus and downloading this video guide is a less costly option. Board the boat at Westminster Pier, which is located beside Westminster Bridge, just across the road from Big Ben's Clock Tower and a short distance from Westminster Underground Station. Across the river, County Hall was home to the Greater London Council until disbanded by Margaret Thatcher's government in 1986. The building now houses the London Dungeon and Sea Life Aquarium. Next to it, the other side of the bridge, St Thomas's Hospital, where Florence Nightingale once worked, has been healing the sick since the 12th century. The Big Wheel, known as the London Eye, was opened on New Year's Eve 1999 and rotates about once every 30 minutes. From the top it's possible to see 30 miles in all directions on a clear day. The 32 pods represent the 32 boroughs of London. Opposite it, on the same side of the river as Westminster Pier, the Ministry of Defence building stands on the former site of Whitehall Palace. Inhabited by the kings and queens of England until most of it burned down in 1698. Happily the wine cellar, commissioned by Henry VIII, is still intact. At the water's edge, the stone pile and topped by a golden eagle is a memorial to Royal Air Force wartime casualties. The next building, Whitehall Court, is a favourite with photographers. Ahead, Hunkerford Bridge carries trains serving the southeast of England into Charing Cross Station. Footbridges attached to either side are known as the Jubilee Bridges. They were opened in 2002, 50 years after Elizabeth II became Queen. Embankment Pier, where the boat usually stops, is situated close to the underground station of the same name. The tree-lined embankment makes for a pleasant riverside walk. Most of the gardens on the other side of the road reached out of the water's edge until 1865, when it was built. The project involved incorporating a road with a railway beneath. In recent years, a cycle superhighway has been added. Across the river from the pier where the Lion Brewery once stood, the Royal Festival Hall was built for the Festival of Britain in 1951. Next to it along the south bank, the Queen Elizabeth Hall is a typical example of brutalist architecture. It incorporates a smaller Purcell room, which serves niche interests such as chamber music, jazz, poetry recital and mime. Meanwhile, just along from the Embankment Pier, Cleopatra's Needle, the oldest point of interest on this cruise, was presented to the British by the ruler of Egypt in 1819 and shipped to the UK on a pontoon in 1877. Delivery was delayed because the British government, although gracious enough to accept the gift, was unwilling to pay for its transportation to London. Inland, Art Deco Chalmac's house, built for a petroleum company, lies close to the Savoy Hotel. A bastion of luxury opened in 1889, and paid for by income clean from performances of Gilbert and Sullivan operas staged in London. One of its first managers, Caesar Ritz, later opened his own hotel. Next, Waterloo Bridge opened in 1817, two years after the Battle of Waterloo. It was rebuilt by a predominantly female workforce during the Second World War, and because of this it's sometimes known as the Ladies' Bridge. The Tower Lifeboat Station, as with all lifeboat stations around Britain, is funded by public donation and manned by volunteers. Across the road beyond it, Somerset House occupies the site of a former Tudor palace commissioned by the Duke of Somerset, brother of Henry VIII's third wife, Jane Seymour. Unfortunately, he was executed at the Tower of London before it was completed. Over the river, it's possible to undertake a guided tour of the National Theatre, arguably good value given that there are three permanent stages. ITV News is broadcast from the tower block beside it. 
fought alongside the embankment, the HMS Wellington, which once saw action during the Second World War, is now the headquarters of the Honourable Company of Master Mariners. Standing almost anonymously on the bank beside it, a small arch commemorates the Silver Jubilee of King George V's reign. As the boat approaches Blackfriars Bridge, it passes the Oxo Tower, the windows of which were cunningly designed in the form of a company logo to overcome a ban on illuminated advertising. Soon after, Sea Container's house is followed by the Doggett's Coat and Badge Pub, which is named after the world's oldest rowing race held annually on the River Thames. Slightly inland, the tall glassy building, number one Blackfriars, is better known to most Londoners as the Vars. Opposite, a short distance before the Victoria Embankment finishes by Blackfriars Bridge, the former City of London School, once a prolific producer of Members of Parliament, and Sion College, now converted into offices, are adjacent to Art Deco Unilever House, whose curved façade follows the contour of the road. Blackfriars Bridge was opened by Queen Victoria in 1869. Just through it, the red columns are all that remain of a former rail bridge dismantled in 1985. A second railway bridge, built in 1886, is now incorporated into Blackfriars Station, where the platforms extend out over the river. After the bridges, former Bankside Power Station, with its tall brick chimney, features on the right bank. Now the Tate Modern is an extremely popular and free art gallery. Beyond it, the unmissable 92-storey high shard becomes increasingly prominent. The pedestrian Millennium Bridge, the first new bridge across the River Thames in London for more than a hundred years, was closed a few hours after first opening because structural problems resulted in a severe wobble. Since then, it's been known as the Wibbly Wobbly Bridge. A multi-million pound revamp has, we are told, rendered it safe. To the left, Riverside City of London School was, of course, formerly located the other side of Blackfriars Bridge. Behind it, Don St Paul's Cathedral, completed in 1710, took 35 years to build. Not far from the Tate Modern, the Globe Theatre, modelled on the original used by William Shakespeare in the early 17th century, specialises in productions of the great Bard's works. It's basically an open-air theatre with very little roof covering, so may be best avoided on rainy days. Ahead and to the left, the tall buildings of London's financial centre, which include the Gherkin and Walkie Talkie, will feature on the skyline throughout the remainder of this cruise. The journey continues towards Southwark Bridge, London's least used bridge. Just past it, the Anchor Public House, from where Samuel Pepys watched the Great Fire of London, was also frequented by William Shakespeare and Samuel Johnson compiler of the first serious English dictionary. There's been a pub here for more than 800 years. Next is a bridge carrying trains into Cannon Street Station, which like Charing Cross Station back at Hungerford Bridge, also serves the southeast of England. After passing beneath it, look right to see a replica of the Golden Hind in dry dock. Sir Francis Drake, hailed as a pirate by the Spanish, sailed round the world in the original from 1577 to 1580. This replica has completed the same feat. The church just beyond, parts of which date from the 12th century, was upgraded to become Southwark Cathedral in 1905. There's no charge for admission. London Bridge ahead, although not particularly impressive, was the first bridge to span the river into London. Originally constructed in 55 AD, it's been replaced a number of times since. Through it, almost immediately to the left, the monument, built to commemorate the Great Fire of 1666, and St Magnus the Martyr Church, which was the entry to the bridge until 1831, can be seen fleetingly between riverside buildings. A little further on, the arch facade of Billingsgate, once home to the world's largest fish market, which closed in 1982, is followed by the old customs house. 
The Pool of London, a stretch of water downstream from London Bridge, is where most ships unloaded their cargo when London was a thriving port. Activity more or less ceased by the 1960s after the advent of shipping containers, and the area was redeveloped mainly for residential use. Many of today's riverside apartments are actually converted warehouses. There's a hefty charge to visit the viewing platform on the 72nd floor of the Shard. Across the river, the walkie-talkie also has a viewing platform called the Sky Garden. Not as high, but high enough, and it's free. Book a visit via the website. HMS Belfast, a warship which saw active service during the Second World War, is now a popular floating museum. It was built at the Harland and Wolf shipyard in Belfast. And so was the Titanic. Just beyond, before Tower Bridge, the roundish glass building is City Hall. On the opposite bank, construction of the more famous Tower of London started around 1078, a few years after the Norman Conquest. It's been expanded, upgraded and refurbished ever since. Formerly a royal residence, it's also been used as a prison, treasury, armory, zoo and public records office. Now one of London's top tourist attractions where the crown jewels are on display, it's home to half a dozen or so ravens, and if rumour is to be believed, several ghosts. Tower Bridge, which some visitors mistakenly think is London Bridge, opened in 1894, and it's the last completely new road bridge to have been built across the River Thames in London. It opens about a thousand times each year. To know when, consult the timetable online. This cruise finishes at the Tower Millennium Pier near the Tower of London. Some boats continue to Greenwich, a UNESCO World Heritage Site which some passengers may wish to visit. The old Royal Naval College there, designed by Christopher Wren, is free to enter. The Queen's House, designed by Inigo Jones, was completed in 1635. The Queen was Anne of Denmark, wife of James I. Again, entry is free. There's also no charge to enter the National Maritime Museum, the largest of its kind in the United Kingdom. Taking a walk up the hill to the Royal Observatory is rewarded by some rather nice views over London. For keen shoppers, there are a couple of fairly decent markets, while gastronomes may be interested in visiting one of the few remaining shops selling pie and mash, once a staple meal of London's East End. And of course, unmissable beside the river, the famous Cutty Sark was built specifically to bring tea from China. As well as returning from Greenwich by boat, it's also possible to return to central London aboard one of the driverless trains of the Docklands Light Railway. Head for Tower Gateway Station, which is just across the road from the Tower of London.